Hello and welcome to the video. This is the latest video in the Ardu Pilot on Cheap Flight Controller series. Now, so far we've built the thing, we've taken it out and flown it. I've even shown you the cool things you can do with stuff like showing your flight in Google Earth. And this is part of the fabulous stuff that is in the Ardu Pilot software that we can put inside models now with the £20 flight controller and a £15 GPS. Now the really cool stuff continues. I need to give a shout out to a gentleman called Andrew Dibbins, who was the person who got in touch with me about this. Now because this is relatively all new stuff, it's all kind of still in uh, in production, I guess. Uh, it's all changing and it's a great opportunity for me to learn things from you as a community, as well as kind of show some of the stuff back. And what Andrew was talking about was the use of some telemetry coolness, both in Mission Planner and on the flight controller itself, to be able to send out data that we can use with FR Sky receivers. So we can look on this stuff on a Tiranus X7S or Horus X10 radio, or even the Jumper 16. And then also a really cool app that you can run on those radios that then allows you to view that data in kind of a pseudo Mission Planner screen. Now, the question I've had as I've posted it on Instagram is, well, why do we need that? Because we've got on-screen display, right? Well, that's fine until your on-screen display has a problem, or maybe you fly out of range, or maybe something like your goggle battery gives up the ghost. There's lots of reasons why having all the telemetry information on the screen is actually quite handy. Similarly, I don't tend to have the goggles running. Uh, you tend to have to plug the airplane in and let it sit and soak for a minute for the GPS lock to happen. Uh, things like the GPS lock will be announced on the actual screen of the radio itself and you can see the health and status, how much flight you've got left. Now, a lot of professional pilots fly the Ardu software the Ardu plane, um, Ardu copter, whatever, with some kind of ground station connected with the radios. But this is a really cheap way with a script that's currently free and also a little cable that you can make for a couple of pounds to have that on the screen. Now, I have looked at this kind of stuff before, uh, so I'll put a link in the description if you want to go and have a look at that. But that's a commercial product. It's available, you license the software on your radio and you have to buy the cable. This is available for a couple of pounds if you're willing to do a little bit of soldering. So in this video, let me show you how I've got it working. Again, caveat, this is technology that isn't actually released yet, but this is to help Andrew and those of you that may be playing with this uh, kind of get to the end and have it all working. First thing we need to think about is the radio. The radio itself and the version of OpenTX on the radio has to be flashed and support both Lua and Lua C scripts. If both of those are supported, then you are going to be able to run the scripts and have it work. If they're not, then it won't burst into life. Luckily, on radios like the T16, it has been flashed with Jumper TX with that enabled, so you can add the script as a telemetry script and it'll work fine. If you upload the script and it doesn't work, there's every chance that it's probably not got the Lua C script option selected, and I'd recommend you update to 2.2.3, which is what is on the radio that I'm using here for the demo. Um, I have not updated this for ages, but I had to bite the bullet to get this working. So hopefully, Andrew, you appreciate the effort. Next bit then is to download and copy the SD files for the Yapu script onto your SD card. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, there are downloads and you just copy them over the top. There are three directories in there that correspond to both the application and the other things that you need, including sound files. So all of that will work. And then once you've got that on, the next job is to add that as part of the telemetry screen. Uh, you can either add it in something like the T16 from Jumper by going and adding it into uh, one of the telemetry screens via the widget stuff, or on the Tronus radio and things like the X7S, what you have to do is go into the telemetry screen inside the OpenTX menu, and you need to set up one of your telemetry screens to run that particular yeah. script. Trying to go and open it from the SD card like you would if you're going to configure uh, an S6R or a Crossfire system, it has to be run as part of a telemetry screen, almost like a widget when, uh, when it's running. To access it, you just press and hold the page button. That brings up the telemetry screen, and then you can page across until it appears. The widgets, uh, the app from Yapu is always running so when you first boot it up you'll hear that it'll actually announce that the telemetry is working and it'll also then start announcing everything back. Yapu 
telemetry ready. But to get the telemetry, we need to do the hardware stuff. So we need to make this little cable here. Now, the parts I got were just from eBay. I just searched for the general components. Again, the link to the pieces that you need is in the document. I've got a link to the document in the description. You need a little diode and you also need this little board as well. Now, the little board is going to convert RS-232 or serial transmit receive communications into TTL and vice versa. And it's the bit that's going to take the data out of the Ardu Pilot flight controller and squidge and turn it into something that we can use for a single cable to plug into the smart port connector on the FR Sky receiver you're using. Now, wire it up as I've shown in this diagram. Uh, the first way I did it, I did it as per the diagram that I was looking at. It was the wrong way around. I found that what I had to do was switch the transmit and receive wires just swap them over and it burst into life. The other thing to be aware of with the omnibus board, that little TTL board is only supplied with five volts when it's plugged into the battery. So it won't run unless you've actually got the battery installed. There are reports of some of these boards, some of the clone boards of these RS-232 TTL converter boards, uh, when they're supplied with five volts getting really hot. Um, I haven't had this problem here. I guess I've been lucky. So just double check it. And just when you first turn it on, just touch it with your finger, make sure it isn't overheating. If it is, just take it off and throw it away and buy another one. So wire it up as we've done here. And what the diode is doing is the diode is connecting the transmit and receive data lines coming out into one wire that we can plug into the smart port connector on the receiver. Now the smart port connector for the XSR that I'm using is in the middle and that's how I've connected it. Okay, so now we've got the hardware cable in place. We've got the telemetry on the radio, so that's ready. Last thing we need to do is then just tell Mission Planner that it's going to send FR Sky smart port stuff out of where we're about to plug that cable in on the omnibus flight controller. Now there's been tons and tons of updates to the Ardu Pilot software and it now knows uh, lots and lots of different telemetry styles. Back in a couple of years ago, last time I looked, it only really talked Mavlink. Uh, these days it'll talk loads of stuff. So what you have to do is go into the full parameter list, search for the serial port that the telemetry is going to come out of. And again, the documentation for the omnibus board shows me it's UART1 or serial one that I'm interested in. If I type in serial one and go into the settings, I can change the telemetry type to 10 and then hit enter and then write those parameters down to the flight controller and then if we plug everything together from a hardware point of view we should be in business. Once that's done go into the telemetry screen on the radio and discover new sensors and in addition to the three standard sensors that you get from the receiver you should see a massive list of all the other sensors coming down and that proves that the cable is working and you've set the telemetry properly on the flight controller. Now that those sensors are there, then the next time you start up, then the sensors will be read by the Yapu telemetry script and presented on the screen. So actually, it's not too tricky at all. It works really nicely. I do like the fact that I can disable all of the announcements that I have on the radio that tells me which mode I'm in, because the way it works is I flick the switch, that information is sent up to the receiver into the flight controller. The flight controller then changes the flight mode. That comes back down on the telemetry link, and it's that coming back down on the telemetry link that causes the radio to announce which mode it's in. There is a slight lag on the artificial horizon, but if I'm flying and I have an issue with maybe I'm flying somewhere, someone else near me fires up their FPV equipment, stomps all over me FP FPV signal, I don't know what I'm doing, then I could switch the return to home to, so it flies back to me and watch the progress of that on my radio until I can get my FPV signal back. I just like the ability to have the positive reporting back from directly from the flight controller as to what's happening with flight modes, auto level or whatever. So rather than have to set that up on lots of different switches, the telemetry application will do that all for me. So it'll tell me if I'm in fly-by-wire mode, if I'm in auto trim, even if I'm doing things like GPS return to home or things like auto tune as well. Now, for those of you watching who love FPV and only want to fly FPV, you're probably still not convinced about this. And you know what? That probably means that this is not an app for you. But if you are in the situation where, like me, you have flown Ardu Pilot with a proper mission planner screen with a 3DR 
radio link and watched everything go on and you want a mini version of that on the radio for these little wings that you can put audio plane on now then this is going to be right up your street it's amazing this kind of technology that we can do for a couple of pounds worth of hardware from ebay last point this kind of stuff is also available with things like inav if you want me to show it in stuff like inav as well leave a comment down below and i'll do another video how to set that up uh, that is even easier in inav than it is here but hopefully that's good for those of you who are interested and andrew that answers the question thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end you can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you like the video and like what i'm doing here then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too if you really like what i'm doing you can go the extra mile and become one of my patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too if you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.